Hiya folks, I've got this old Champion Premier 21 inch deck, rusted out deck with a Honda engine on. It's got the OH overhead cam, 160cc Honda engine on. I got this for nothing, bloke give it to me. And uh, it was too good to just waste. I was gonna try and repair the deck, but I thought, no, sod it. Because I got it for nothing, I sourced the free deck and I've actually powder coated it and I'm gonna change everything off of here onto the new deck. So let's get going with that. Right, so this is the deck that I've recently refurbished. I've powder coated it, as you can see, it's turned out very, very nice. I've done that myself in my powder coating oven, and the underside of it has actually been um, hammerited with black hammerite, so that's all ready to go. And I've done that in my own home-built powder coating oven there, which basically was a filing cabinet, which I'd uh, stripped the insides out, and I had an old cooker, which I got for, for I think, 15 pounds I bought off of um, eBay, and I took the elements out and the control module at the top there, as you can see, which is sitting on top of the filing cabinet, wired it all up, and basically that's my powder coating oven. I was able to hang this up inside the powder coating oven, sidewards, and as you can see, it turned out great. But if you want to see videos on how I did that, I actually done this on a video, so I'll leave a link uh, up here to the video where I've done the powder coating. And also, below this video, you'll see the link to the powder coating oven that I actually built, if you're interested and you might want to give it a go yourself. Right, that's enough of me waffling. Let's have a little look at what we've got here. So, I won't start it up in this video. It does run and start and everything works and the drive works. As you can see, it's a Champion Premier self-propelled mower. It's got the uh, Honda CGV 160 engine on, which is a lovely engine. But the main problem with it is, as you can see there, the deck is actually totally shot there and it's not worth me doing anything with that, so I'm not even gonna bother, and that's why I sourced a new deck. It is a 2008 model, and everything is there, all the controls are there, the grass bag's there, and in good condition as well, although it all wants probably a bit of a clean up, as you can see from the uh, cables there, the cables are all operating nice and freely, I've already checked them, there's no sticking cables at all, or tightness in any of the cables up there whatsoever, the handles are a bit scuffed up, so they will get a slight rub down and a repaint as well. I'll clean up all the ancillary stuff, get the engine off, give that a good service, even though it does start and run, but can you see around the front there as well, look? It's just far too gone, and come, even coming around this side, it was starting to perforate around this side as well, so I had no other option really, had to keep this either for spares and strip it down, or because it's winter, it's my hobby as well. Source another deck, which I lucky enough I found that. I got that for 35 pounds. It wasn't in that condition when I got it, but um, as you can see now, it is absolutely lovely. So the powder coating is really going to protect this, and also it won't scratch and peel the way normal paint does when you freshly paint something. So that's enough waffle from me now. Let's get on now. Let's start stripping this down, get it down to its bare bones, and um, start refurbishing a few parts, and then we'll change it all over onto that new deck, and then see how we go with that. I'll see you in a minute. Now that you got me started, I just can't stop. No, no. Cause I love you, baby. I can't let you go, baby. I gotta tell you that I won't let go. I've been looking for love so true. When I was down and down, along came you. Though you might be a liar. Cause I love you Right, I just wanted to show you this folks, I've just lowered down this cover, the belt cover there as you can see, with just one screw in the middle, but as I pulled that down, can you see how congested all this is in there, look, and also around the belt there, look, look at that, unbelievable, look, this is why these things fail, you know, and the engine bolts, which are holding the engine in, the three bolts there, they would not come undone, so basically what I've had to do is to get the blow lamp on them and just heat them up and then they span off with the uh, impact driver. I've got obviously one more to do there as you can see, so uh, that's the last one in there. But uh, you do come up against this sort of stuff and if you haven't got the right gear, lucky enough I've got a, an impact tool here. This one's a Clark brushless one and I've got a 5 amp hour lithium ion battery on it. And that just gives it a bit more extra oomph. Right, now I've got that off, let's get this, um, in fact if I take that belt off, I don't want to burn the belt you see, so let's pull that belt down a bit further. Hold on. In fact, that should come off now, that 
boss should come off. And I'm lucky because it's nice and slidey, look. Here we go. Here we go, come on boss. It's probably just enough out of the way there, so let's just try and heat that bolt up a bit. As I say, I want to use that belt again, hopefully, so I don't want to burn it. Sometimes heat's the only way to get these tight, stubborn bolts out, you see. Right, okay. I need my impact gun. I want to be careful that the engine don't fall off here, because there's nothing holding it on you, sir, apart from this one bolt now. So I've got to be careful. And I'm holding the spanner on the back side of it as well, folks. Let's put a bit of lube on it. Very dry fridge, you see, when you uh, heat them up. There we go. Oh. Is that off? Nearly. Nearly off. <laughs> there we go. Right, folks. Let's drop that back down. Put it on a deck. Now, let's lift that off, hopefully. There we go. That's the engine out of the way. Put that over there for now. And as I expected, the boss dropped off, so happy days. Right. Carry on with the strip down now, get the wheels off, get the gearbox off, get all this bracketry off, and we're there. So I'll see you in a minute. Right, here we are, folks. It is a few days later now, but um, I've not been very well. I've had that bug or virus that's going about at the moment. The heady cold thing with a throat and the uh, sinus is all blocked up. So I've still actually got it now, but um, I'm going to soldier on. So anyway, I did strip that lawnmower down. Let's show you what we got. So, I mean, as you can see, there was no way that deck was going to be able to be repaired it's uh, totally gone and I wouldn't even bother doing that so I'm glad we got the other one. All the parts are here, they're going to be cleaned up which is the plastic parts. I'll give them a good clean up. We've got the uh, gearbox here again, just wants a clean down really to be honest with you. And clean up the wheels and stuff like that so that's no problem. And that's all the bolts and everything that's come off of it. So again they will be cleaned up. Things like that really, I mean I'll just clean that with a, a wire wheel on me, a pillar drill basically and just get all that crap off of there. And the blade itself, as I say, the blade's in pretty good condition, although it's rusty. So I'll give that a good clean and I'll probably repaint that as well. I always do that. And I have actually got this box here, which was basically made out of a bit of decking and a bit of um, OSB ball by the looks of it. And this was made to me by a subscriber of mine, John Oliver. And it's actually a, a, an engine stand for your engine. So that allows me to work on there without the shaft of the engine rocking about on the uh, deck. So let me go and get the engine. So as you can see, the shaft sticking through there, that just sits on there like that. And that means then that all I've got to do is just rotate the box and I can get to every part of that engine. So it's a nice little addition there. So anyway, I'm going to start cleaning this off, get this sorted out, give it a service, take the carb off it. In fact, I've not even looked at the air filter on this. Let's see what sort of condition that's in. Again, I have not done nothing to this engine. Oh, hello, look at that, look. That is why you need an air filter in, folks, because you get a lot of people if they've got a dirty air filter, sometimes people take the air filter out and say, oh, I'll get one at a later stage. But if that was the case and you would have left the air filter out, all that crap would have been sucked into your engine. There could be grit in there and that will uh, do your rings in and your bore. So that's the reason why we need an air filter in, folks. Just for that reason there, look. There you go. And that's totally clogged up, so I will need a new one in there. So while we're here, I'll just get me quarter drive socket set out with a 10mm socket on it and just zip these out there we go ease that forward and there is a breather pipe on the back there as we well know which you have to dislodge let's take them out there we go, and there is a gasket that just dropped down there. Again, make sure that that's okay, that goes on that way. Keep that separate. So there's our air filter box, and on the back there, as you can see, there's that tube there, which connects up to that tube there. So I like to just clear away some of this. And 
just to get rid of some of that crap that's around the engine and uh, we've got the fuel line which is always very tricky on these to undo so what we can do is literally just loosen off this uh, nut here and that brings a whole lot out like that, that bolt, it's only one bolt look and that just brings everything off of there clip your spring off from the bottom there tip that out like that's a little dog leg on that and the little spring goes on the back so there we go so we've taken a whole lot off there because I mean all that linkage really we can clean up as well we want all that to look pretty good when we uh, do the service on it and while you're there as well on the back of it you can also check your hose to make sure that's all on and not perished at all it just makes life a bit easier we're not touching any adjustments or anything we've literally just taken that one bolt out of there bring everything off as a one go we do have that little linkage as you can see and that one is for the uh, choke we have got a backing plate on there so that should pull away now gaskets on the back towards the engine as you can see just ease that off and there is a gasket as say on the front face of that as well and that goes with the kick facing under the engine like that always make a note of them sort of things because uh, it's very easy to put them sort of things on the wrong way so all I should be able to do now is literally pull that off of that base again I'm stuck, stuck by a gasket and then the same again look at what hole it is it's the one by the little lever there look that little lever sticking out because there is a hole the other end of that as well and literally just tip that forward and that will pull that out as well and we can safely see the clip underneath there which is very tricky to get to when you're trying to do it in place like that see the clip is actually around the back there there's no way you would have got that off so get your little pliers in there pull your clip forward don't like these clips you imagine trying to get this clip off because it was around the back with that bracket on still and then literally ease that tube off like that there's your carb off that can now be serviced that can now be cleaned up and uh bob's your uncle right okay so we've got our uh, bracket on there which i'm just going to give a bit of a dousing with uh some carb cleaner just to loosen up all that crap on there and it does take it off very well all this sort of stuff can get your linkages all stuck up and seized up so get, get it all out of there and also get the old compressed air and just watch your eyes folks move that over there for a moment and just give that a blow off that's now a nice serviceable item now and when we put that back together we ain't going to get all mucky or dirty so let's put that to one side bring our carb back in and again because we're going to be taking our carb apart folks we don't want to be introducing all this exterior crap into the carb look at all that in there look so give it a good clean off as well before you start work and that way you ain't going to worry about introducing any of this external rubbish into the small holes and venturas of the carb it don't take a second to do and it just makes your life a lot easier especially if you have a problem carb and a fault your fault diagnosing on it you're just eliminating another possible problem that, to introduce and literally blow it all off again and already i'm happy to take that carb apart now and work on it so cleanliness is of the essence when you're doing maintenance or repair work in my opinion right okay here we go and i am making note folks of the way that the float bowl come off someone's put it around the back there which isn't normally a good idea see the way that's that's the way the carb goes on so that's been put around the back so i'll be bringing that round to the over the side or the front so that if you need to drain your float bowl at any time you've got decent access to it so someone's actually had this off i would imagine and put it on the wrong way now let's just whiz that off there we go take the float bowl off sometimes you need to give them a slight tap so there we go that come off nice and easy but uh, we have got some uh, debris in the bottom of the float bowl there so i don't know if you can see that but uh, there is some in there and it's a lot of it's just come out there so put it to one side just going to take the pin out all straightforward stuff if you've seen carb repair videos before put that 
in there. Lift the float off and the needle valve drops out. Put that in there. We'll check that afterwards. Again, visual indications is all we're looking for. Now I'm going to take the manger out. And again, we've all got our own favourite screwdrivers for this job. I can't find mine, believe it or not, but uh, I think this one will do. Unscrew it. Sometimes if they don't drop out, you've got a little hole there. They do tend to get caught on these threads sometimes. They're double threaded, these. There we go, like that. And they just need a little helping hand sometimes. There it comes. There we go, that's the main jet. And also in there you've got the emulsion tube as well you want to push through. And they should fall out. But sometimes they don't. Sometimes you need to give them a little push through. Like that. Now these little tubes, as you well know, are very prone to blocking up but this one actually looks in good condition but that will get a clean as will the main jet <laughs> and as this thing was running I can see there's a hole through there so I'm happy with that but I will clean it all turning the carb over under the um, throttle stop screw there which has normally got about two to three threads sticking out we need to check that circuit as well or clean that circuit so just undo your throttle stop, like that. That means we can now take out our pilot jet circuit. That's just tightened all the way in, by the way. And if you've got slow running issues of surging when it's running slow, in here is the circuit you want to be cleaning that can be blocked. That in there, there's a little tiny jet in there, which you can't get out. So you want to run it through with carb cleaner. And you may see, that's the one there that it comes out. So just back flush it. There you go. See? So if you've got a surging carburetor, there's a very good chance that that channel in there could be blocked. So just go through all the channels. All the holes you can find. There we go. Another one there, let's see. Your main jet channel there's your main fuel inlet which is clean now as you can probably see there's not too much wrong with this carburetor so I'm happy now but we can now take our compressed there and blow that through them channels again Down there. And I'm happy now that that body is as clean as it can be. So we put that to one side. So let's have a look at our emulsion tube. Now what a lot of people don't understand, again with a surging carburetor at normal high speed, if it's surging at normal high speed, the chances are that your little holes on the side of your emulsion tube could be blocked because this is your mixing chamber for the air in the fuel so fuel comes up your center via your main jet there goes straight up but air is sucked in via these little holes and these are your mixing holes for your air and fuel mix together so when it comes out there atomized the air is coming in through these little holes and mixes with the neat fuel coming up through there and then it atomizes into your, your, your top of your carb and then gets sucked into your engine. So a surging carburetor can mean that these air holes are blocked and it's not getting the right amount of air. A non-starting carburetor can possibly mean that it's not getting any fuel which means that your main jet is blocked. So just things to look out for. Surging carburetor at high speed, when it's on high speed, is most probably your emulsion tube holes blocked. Surging carburetor at low speed can possibly be your primary circuit, which is underneath there, 
that shoots neat fuel into your engine there for starting and slow running. So that's the two things to look out for on this type of carburetor. Right, well, I'm going to put this back together now. You haven't got to really see that, and I'll see you in a minute. Right, I, I have stopped, folks. I wanted to just show you this quickly, to, uh, just to let you do, let you see what I actually do. So I've cleaned the inside of that car, uh, carb there, the carb bowl. There is actually some uh, two slight bits of corrosion in the bottom there. And all I tend to use, rather than the wire wall, because you don't want to be introducing any crap into there, and wire wall is taking bits off the surface because it's an actual iron material. What I tend to use is what you call a Scotch Bright pad. This is a grey Scotch Bright pad. And um, all I'm going to do is just, uh, if you've got a pair of scissors, it'll be quicker. I just like to cut a section of Scotch Bright pad off. And this is a sort of a plastic material and it's an abrasive as well. And I just go around the inside of the float bowl with the Scotch Bright pad, and that way you know you ain't introducing any rubbish into there. But you also can clean the outside of it as well. Look at that, look. See how dirty that is there. Again, this is a Scotch Bright pad. Let me just show you. So again, it's a plastic material, but I think you'll agree that when I have a, just give it a little wipe over with that, can you see the difference? How shiny that is compared to that side. Look, just do it again. And you know that you aren't leaving any metallic material inside the actual float bowl or carb, which is a fine -tuned, finely tuned piece of equipment. And it just makes the job a little bit better that you know you're not gonna be damaging or introducing foreign particles into that carb. So there you go. That's what I use, and that's how that's brought that up in a little short rubbing session. And that way we know we've not damaged the inside of the carb. Right, so let's put this back on. And one other thing I meant to tell you about this carb as well, is this one's got a mixture screw on the side with a, so you, uh, like an anti-tamper thing there so you don't actually take this one fully out someone's already been in there as you can see because it's been marked purple they've marked it where the position was so someone's actually done that and that's got a fine small hole inside there i'm not even going to bother taking it out because i'm going to just play with the uh adjustment which they've given us there and leave it on its original settings there shouldn't be any problem with that anyway it's only a very thin needle going into the side to allow more air through so the floats back on that's the front of the carb there so i want that round that side there like that, around there so we can access the uh, drain plug if we ever need to, to drain our carb out to winterize it. And this time I won't be doing this up with the uh, battery drill. I'll be using a standard socket because it's very easy to strip the center bowl where the main jet is. And we don't want to do that, so just nip it up. And rather than put all your lever onto it from the, from the end, I take the tighten them up when I'm holding it there. That way you physically can't tighten it up because your grip will slip. So there you go, I'm happy with that. And that's that carb rebuilt. If we had brand new gaskets on there, I would use them. I'm not gonna in this case because I haven't got a gasket set for it, but uh, that carb now is fully serviced, ready to go, and it's nice and clean on the inside and outside. So don't forget, get yourself some uh, gray Scotch Bright pads. These are about six to 800 grit, I think, if you'll find, if, on, on the sandpaper scale but there's no fear of you actually leaving any metal debris inside your carburetor by using this. Right, folks, uh, carbs all back on now. Uh, the oil's been changed, I've done that. I've got a brand new air filter to go on here, but I'll just give this cover a bit of a clean up first, inside and out, because we don't want to be reintroducing any of this whole crap back into the carb again, do we? I should have done a here's one I prepared earlier. In fact, I'll do that. Here's one I prepared earlier. There you go, folks. The powers of editing. How about that? Right, let's get our new air filter. Just plonk that in there. And put that over the bottom there. And that should just clip into there very nicely. Right, so that's that done. I haven't looked at the spark plug yet because uh, I've not got that far. So we'll just quickly take that out and have a quick look. This can normally tell us how this thing's been running by the colour of it, you see. But we know the air filter was dirty, so it could be a bit black. And as you can see there, it is running black. It is an NGK plug. It's an NGK BPR6ES. So I've actually got a new one of them, which I'm gonna put in. Right, okay, so let's get that put in. There we go, brand new one. Always like to check the length just before I put them in, in case someone's put one in the wrong box, you see. And that does happen sometimes. So there we go, the lengths are both the same. Put it back in, straight in. So give that a little nip up. 
Don't forget they've got a compression washer on there first, folks. So you'll go, you'll feel a tightness, and then it will come to a sort of stop like that, and then just give a little nip again, and that's it. That's all you need. Once that washer's compressed, I don't need to put that on yet. So there we go. That's that engine serviced, cleaned, and ready to go back in. New oil in it. I will check the oil once more once I actually put the engine back into the lawnmower, but uh, I'm happy that can be plonked straight back on. Right, folks, just been doing a bit of sandblasting. You don't have to do this. I'm doing it because I've got a sandblaster. And all I've done is sandblast the blade there before I put it back on. It was in a bit of a state. And I've also put a new edge on it. As you can see, nice and shiny there now. So both edges are done there. And what I've done, because there was a few stone chips on it, I actually flattened the top profile off first to get the notches out. And then with the uh, disc grinder, with a flappy disc on, just went along the same profile like that until I got all them notches out. And one other thing you want to do as well, you want to check that your blade is in balance. Just, I, I use it as a screwdriver. You can buy a special tool to do these. But if you just see that, that's pretty much level there. If that was too heavy on one side, you'll find it will go down like that. That means that your blade's imbalanced. But as you can see, wherever I put that, that's where it's actually staying. So that's what you want. The blade is in balance, so we're happy with that. <laughs> what I also do, again, because I can do it and it's my hobby, so all I'm going to do is just basically put some uh, tape along the edge of the... I can't do it with my bleeding gloves on. Let's take them off. Actually, remember to put the gloves on for once, folks. So all I do, just to allow people to see what I've done, I just put a bit of uh, masking tape along the the shiny edge, so to speak, where I've just sharpened. And what that has the appearance of doing is showing that it's been maintained. And it's, it's all visual, because you can't actually see this, but um, anyone who wants to buy this mower may stick their head up there underneath and just check to see, because I'll be putting in the ad that it's, it's had a blade sharpen and balance. So I just do that to both sides of the blade. Because I just want to retain that when I paint the blade. So what I used to do, I used to paint the ends of these blades red, but I don't bother with that anymore. It's, again, it's just purely cosmetic. Not necessary, it's just what I do. I've actually cleaned this down with acetone as well, so I'm just going to hang this up and spray it. So as you can see, hanging there, that blade is in balance, look. Happy days. So, just give it a couple of coats of this black this is gloss black this folks I'll try and do it all in one go there we go that'll do for the first coat and I'll come back afterwards give it a second coat and then we'll pull that tape off that's another bit refurbished right back in the workshop again folks it's actually a couple of days later I've been Laying on the sofa for two days, I've had a blinking chest infection, I'm coughing up green crap and all that now, but uh, I feel good enough to come out and do some more work on this lawnmower, hopefully get it finished today. Right, so here's our blade which we uh, cleaned and painted and sharpened the other day. So it just makes it look a bit better, and as you can see, the, the putting the tape over the edge just gives it that nice prepared look, basically. So, as I say, I just flattened that edge off, because that had a few deep, quite deep notches in that. So I flattened it off with a grinder like that, and then just reprofiled it there until we got our sharp edge again. So that's how, how I've done that. And it's nice and hard now. It's been a couple of days that's gone off for. And I think you'll agree, that looks like a new blade. So whenever someone lifts that up underneath to look underneath, they see that and it's been maintained and they think it's probably it is a new blade anyway. Right, so I've got the fire on in here. It's three degrees in here at the moment, but um, hoping it's gonna warm up very shortly. But I've got the new deck now. Let's just shut, turn the camera around and show you where we are. So the engine's ready to go and ready to be put back on. Coming over here, here's the new deck, here's the old deck there. I'm going to get rid of that old deck now, get that out of the way. Start the process of reassembly now. And these plastic parts, I'll just give them a clean up as and when. I'll probably put you on a bit of time lapse for this, but um, I'm going to get this main part in first. This is the wheel gearbox assembly and the uh, adjuster forks. and get, the, get, get it rolling first and then we'll come back to you and uh, start uh, putting everything else back on and preparing everything else. So I'll see you in a minute.
we go folks all back together now looking absolutely superb if i must say so myself a couple of little things i want to finish off i've got no decals on the front of it and i've got to clean the wheels up the wheel cap so i'm going to be doing that now so i'm going to try and save the old decal or decal off of the um old deck so i've got a peak gun here just to warm it up a little bit if it does damage it then i can either make something very similar or leave it off it just depends so we'll see how this goes anyway. Sometimes when you melt the surface, they just stretch and then they become no good. So I'm not gonna go too mad. And rather than lift it up and pull it, I'm gonna try and just get a blade underneath it and just sort of ease it off. This one's a padded one as well, which is uh, not gonna help matters. I've got half of it off. All right, well, hopefully I've got that one. It has got some sort of sponge on the back, but I have got some adhesive glue up here, which I'm hoping is gonna help it to reseal. So I have got some of this trim fix adhesive, which again is very good stuff. Just on there. Put that on there like that and hopefully that stuff gets really, really tacky. So I'm going to leave that for a second and then we'll try and apply it. So heating this one up seems to be coming off a lot easier without damaging it. So. Yes, there we go, look. So I've got the actual make one off. I'm very pleased with that. Let's come around this side and let's try and put that 
somewhere in the centre. There you go, I think that's okay. There we go, how about that? We'll try this one as well. There we go. Happy with that. So we've kept the original stickers on there. So all I've got to do now is put the wheel trims on and get outside and give her a fire up and let's see if it's all okay. Right, well here it is folks. Let's get you a bit nearer to it. Looking all lovely and splendid in its new colour scheme. I'll put the wheels back on, the grass bags back on as you can see and um, just give it a little bit of a clean down. And I'm well pleased with the way this has turned out, I must say. Absolutely lovely that's looking. I've got the original label on over there as you can see, so um, I've checked the oil again, so we're gonna need to put some fuel in it now before we go for our first start up. So I'm not too sure if it's gonna need setting up yet because we've not had it running yet. So um, since we've taken all the carb apart and serviced it all and that, so we'll just have to see how it goes. All right, let's get some of this juice in here. And of course the beauty of having a powder coated deck is you ain't going to get none of that nasty paint bubblage that you get with uh, decks that have been just lacquered with a normal lacquer sort of thing. So I'm just checking under the carb to see if we've got any uh, leaks there. We haven't. I'm just going to turn the fuel on and just look out for some leaks under the carb, which we don't appear to have. Nope. Have we got enough fuel in there? I'd say we've got enough in there, yeah. We're covering the bottom. I'll tell you what, I'm going to put a little drop more in. Just a little drop more. There we go. Right, that's about half a tank full now. Near enough three quarters of a tank full. Just wipe up our little bit of residue. Right, don't appear to have any leaks so we can go for a start up. That's that one. Well, um, you've got to be pleased with that, folks. There we go. Happy days. Straight down on tick over. Absolutely fantastic. We know we've done a first class job on that carb clean anyway, so you're pretty much guaranteed. If you do the job thoroughly, you're going to be okay. Look at that. You can't beat a Honda engine, folks. Reliable as anything. Just keep them maintained, keep them serviced as I've done with this engine and you should be good for years to come. This one's 2008, as you know, this engine and deck, not this deck, but the engine come from 2008. This year it will be 14 years old. There we go. Absolutely superb. I'm well pleased with the way this has come out. As I say, you wouldn't do this to every mower you get, but um, if you get a deck which is rotten out like this and it's a substantial lawn mower, as I say, it's got a Honda engine on. If it might have been a, just a, a standard Briggs and Stratton engine, I probably wouldn't have done it. It is a Champion Premier, as you can see, and uh, it is self-propelled. Everything there is absolutely superb. There's not a thing wrong with that grass bag whatsoever. So whoever gets this this season coming up is going to get a decent mower, I'll tell you. So, so there you go, folks. Another one turned around. 
and looking absolutely great and it's been fully maintained as i said if you do like my videos do check out my other playlists on this channel we've got loads of car repairs we've got motorcycle repairs as well as a playlist for lawnmower repairs and stuff like that and uh, you might find something else there that you're interested in as well thanks for coming along on the journey me doing this little renovation let's call it a renovation it's not a restoration really it's a more of a renovation to get this lawnmower don't forget this lawnmower was given up for dead the person who gave this away was going to send it to the scrapyard and it's only because i turned up and said that uh, i'll take this away for him that he give it to me for free so okay i've spent 35 pounds on the deck we put a new spark plug in it we put some new oil in it and we put a new air filter in it the rest of it was just my time which is your hobby if you like tinkering about in your shed then i'd rather be doing something like this than, than watching the soap apples on the telly anyway thanks very much folks i'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now